Hey guys, I'm here for video 7. Remember, video 6 and video 7 are linked together, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Now, cellular respiration, when we talk about it, we have to talk about chemical pathways. Now, first question comes to mind is how much energy is actually present in food that we consume? Well, just a very scientific answer is a lot. Uh, but about one gram of glucose, remember glucose is made during photosynthesis, about one gram of glucose, one gram of that sugar, that carbohydrate, when burned, releases 3,811 calories of heat energy. Now, that's a lot of heat energy, but now one thing I want you to realize is that a calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. But look down here at the bottom. Oftentimes on our food labels, we'll see it written as a big C. Big C means a kilocalorie. So if you were looking at a Mountain Dew bottle, for example, and it, had, it said it had 240 calories in it, it actually says it has 240 kilocalories in it, so it has 240,000 calories. So when you look at it, you get 3,811 calories from one gram of glucose, then it takes a lot of sugar to make that 240 kilocalories that you get in a Mountain Dew. Now, the process we're going to talk about in cellular respiration is going to be glycolysis. Now, if you remember from the last chapter, lysis means to split. And glyco, I hope you can figure out glyco is going to talk about glucose. So glycolysis is how we split glucose. Uh, and it's basically the breaking down of glucose. And why would we want to break down glucose? We want to break down glucose to release energy. Now, whenever you break down one glucose molecule, you, re you release a net of two ATP. When I say a net, it's going to take energy to break the glucose down. And you're going to get some glucose out. So you're going to end up with a a gain of two ATP. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you have oxygen present at the time, it's going to go through a certain pathway and do what we call aerobic cellular respiration. And if you have no oxygen present, it's going to go through another pathway and go through anaerobic respiration, which we call fermentation. So there are actually two types of respiration: ones you do with with oxygen present, and ones you do without oxygen present. Now. The way I think of this is this. If, if I was go, to go to an exercise class and take an aerobics class, the instructor would be up there jumping up and down, doing all these activities, and would be talking perfectly normal where I'd be in the audience <laughs> trying to catch my breath. Um, the instructor would be doing aerobic respiration. I would be doing anaerobic respiration because I didn't have enough oxygen to supply my muscles with enough oxygen so that they could produce energy like they needed to. Um, aerobic respiration is what we strive for. Aerobic respiration gives us the most energy. Anaerobic is going to give you less energy. It's going to be a little bit less effective, uh, a little bit less efficient. So there's two types of respiration or two different pathways, so keep those in mind. First one we'll talk about is cellular respiration that occurs that has oxygen present. Now I'm not concerned that you understand what the Krebs cycle is, electron transport chain. Just realize there's a lot of complex steps that go into cellular respiration. All right, but when we do get cellular respiration actually occurring, here's our equation. Six, I mean, uh, C6H12O6 plus 6O2 plus 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy. All right, this equation should look very familiar to you. Isn't it just the opposite of photosynthesis? You know, if you want me to write the photosynthetic equation down there, the photosynthetic equation was 6CO2 plus 6H2O Go to C6H12O6 plus 6O2. Same equation. Where does energy come from? Well, in photosynthesis, we added that energy. How do we add it? We added it as light. We added light to the equation. So these equations are reversing one another. The photosynthetic equation is what plants do or autotrophs do. And the cellular respiration, cellular respiration equation, easy for me to say, is what you would do. Uh, now, what if we didn't have oxygen present? Well, there's two possible ways that uh, the breakdown of glucose could occur. You could do lactic acid fermentation. The end product here is lactic acid. I would dare say that every one of you have experienced lactic acid fermentation before. For example, if I were to go lift weights today, uh, I'd probably be sore tomorrow. And the reason I'd be sore is because my muscles would be doing work anaerobically. And they would be doing it through lactic acid fermentation. And the buildup of lactic acid in my muscles is one of the things that would make me sore. Now, I could decrease the, the effects of lactic acid on my body by stretching after the exercise. 
Um, this would cause the lactic acid to dissipate or to go back into my muscle to some degree. Uh, but this is one way. Now, another is one I hope you're not familiar with, but alcoholic fermentation. Alcoholic fermentation is when uh, bacteria, for example, uh, break down um, sugar material and the byproduct is alcohol. This is actually how alcohol is made. Um, you know, basically barley or wheat rots in an anaerobic environment, produces the alcohol. Um, anyway, now this last little chart here is something that I really hope you, you can understand. This links video 6 and video 7 together. You'll notice it's got uh, the photosynthesis and state of respiration in two columns. Please know this chart for the test. Now, notice what I've got here. Photosynthesis, the function is to capture energy, to actually make glucose. Cellular respiration's function is to release energy. It breaks down glucose. So this one makes glucose, this one breaks it down. Where does this one occur? Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast, because remember it needs chlorophyll. Cellular respiration happens in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. You have more mitochondria in your heart than you do in your bicep because you need more energy. Now notice this here, the reactants. The reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration. The products of uh, photosynthesis are the reactants of cellular respiration. So they're the reverse of each other. So please know that cellular respiration needs photosynthesis in order to go, and photosynthesis needs cellular, respi cellular respiration in order to go. They need each other. So what's the, what is the correlation between photosynthesis and cellular respiration? They're simply opposites of each other. All right, that's video seven. I hope that helps you on the test. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me.